Throughout this course, we're going to use a number of penetration testing tools. You can try and install each of these tools manually, or you can do what most pen, pen testers do, including myself, and use an operating system designed for pen testers. So we're going to use an operating system called Kali, which is based on Linux on Debian. So it's just a flavor of a normal Linux operating system. The only difference is it comes in with most of the tools that we need to use pre-installed and configured correctly. So it makes our life so much easier. You have two options to install Kali. You can install it as a virtual machine. So you can install it inside your main machine and access it through it. And this way, there is no way you can mess up. There is no way you can mess, mess up your hard drive or your current installation. And it works just as efficient as a main machine. Or you can install it as a main machine using the ISO image. If you chose to install it as a virtual machine, I'm actually going to be using it as a virtual machine myself then all you need to do is download it from their website and they actually have pre-built versions for Kali Linux. So you won't actually need to install anything. Let's go to the link and have a look. You'll see that you have pre-built versions. Now there is two main virtualization software. There is VMware and VirtualBox. I'm gonna be using VirtualBox myself. You can use any of them, whichever suits you. So all you have to do is click on the one on the virtual software that you're using and download the one related to you. So if your processor is a 32-bit, download the 32-bit. If your processor is a 64-bit, then download this one. Now, I've already downloaded this one and I've already downloaded VirtualBox. It's very easy to download and install. All you have to do is Google VirtualBox and then go through the installation steps, next, 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 and it's installed. And VirtualBox runs with Windows, Linux, and Mac OS, so it runs on everything. Now I have VirtualBox downloaded, and I have this downloaded as well. Now, as you notice that this file is compressed, and it's in a 7-zip format. So usually you won't be able to open this file. If you're on Windows, you need to download 7-zip, so just Google it and download it. It's free, very easy to install. If you're on, on OS X, then download a program called the Ar Unarchiver. Now you'll find this in the App Store or on Google as well. So I already installed the Unarchiver. I'm gonna right click it and open with the Unarchiver and this will decompress the file for me. Now once it's done uncompressing the file, you'll notice that there's a new file here and it's with a .ova extension. So I'm gonna double this file, double click this file, and you'll notice VirtualBox will automatically open this file for me, and it's telling me that it's going to import a new virtual machine, which is gonna be our Kali Linux machine. I'm gonna import it right here. Now the machine has been imported successfully, and as you can see now, we have a new machine right here that we didn't have before. So I'm just gonna go on the settings to modify a few settings. So usually you'd be able to set up the name here. Uh, usually I'd go on system and modify the amount of RAM, but two, gig two gigs is more than enough for Kali. You can also modify the number of processors it can use and it's set to two processors. Again, this is enough, so I'm gonna leave it the way it is. One of the most important settings that I wanna show you is the network setting. And we're gonna make sure to set this to a NAT network and that will basically connect this virtual machine to a virtual network. So Kali is gonna have internet connection through this virtual network. We'll also connect all our virtual machines to this network so that these machines can communicate with each other and can have internet connection. And we can also try to hack into them from the Kali machine. Now, as mentioned in the requirements, you're gonna need an external wireless card to carry out the attacks explained in the cracking section. You'll also need an external wireless card if you wanted to carry out the network hacking attacks on real networks instead of the virtual network that we're gonna be using. We're gonna go into more details into that in the future. For now, I'm gonna show you how to connect your external wireless card. So I'm gonna go on ports, and I'm gonna go on USB and I'm gonna click on USB 2. And now I actually have my card already connected 
through a USB port. So I'm going to click on the plus sign and the card has a chipset made by Atheros. So this is my card right here. I'm going to click it and click OK. Now, if I run the machine like this, it's going to give me an error because I enab enabled USB 2. When you enable USB 2, you need to install a package called VirtualBox Extension Pack. So we're going to go to Google and we're going to look for VirtualBox Extension Pack. So it's going to take you to the same link that you downloaded VirtualBox from. Now usually you download the latest version, so you can download the latest version of the extension pack right here. Now I actually have an older version of VirtualBox, so if I go on VirtualBox and About, you'll see that I have 5.0.20. So I'm going to download an older version of the extension pack as well. Now if you're on Windows, you can see the version of VirtualBox by going on Help. On Mac OS, you go on VirtualBox and About. So again, if you have the newest version, then you can just download the newest extension pack as well. I have an older version, so I'm going to go on older builds and I'm going to look for my build, which is 5.0.20. And I'm going to download the extension pack from here. Now it's downloaded. I'm going to close VirtualBox and click on this. Now I've already installed this, so it's telling me do I want to reinstall it. I'm just going to do it just to demonstrate to you. And I'm going to agree. It's going to ask me for my password. And we're good to go. Now you can just click on start and that will start the virtual machine for you. We're not going to be talking about how you use this virtual machine in future videos. We're going to talk how to use it and the programs that we're going to be dealing with. But at the moment, we're just going to take it as it is. And now this is Kali Linux installed for you. If you want to log in, the username is root and the password is T-O-O-R. So tour. And that's it. We're logged in and we're ready to use it. Now in the next video, I'm actually going to explain how to install Kali Linux as an ISO. If you're happy enough with using it like this, I'm going to be using it like this. So there's no differences. It's a proper, properly installed installation and you can use it this way per perfectly. But in the next video, I'm just going to show how to install it as an ISO in case you had a problem with running it like this or if you want to install it as a main machine. So if this is working for you, skip the next video and go to the one after that.